right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Can you do me a favor, Chu? Chu Chu, can you get them post-its, please, as they're walking in? All right. Good morning. Uh, thank you for sharing some time here with us. So I appreciate you. My name is Ernesto Mejia Macias. If you can't roll your R's like I can, my name is Ernesto Mejia Macias, same person. Uh, I will be here all morning and actually all day. Unfortunately, both you and I need to leave tomorrow because we have a virtual session tomorrow for PA Migrant Ed. However, we're hoping to take full advantage of today. So first things first, three of you, why are you here? Raise your hand and tell me. And if you say I'm here with my friend, it's all good. We're right here. Students, to get, more to get more family engagement. Yes, back there. Professional. Professional growth, very good, right here. Better ideas, okay? Keep going, you're on a roll. Give me two more. Right here. To remind you why you started, very good. Anybody else? Networking. Sometimes we show up and we don't even know what we show up for, in particular, our students. Case in point. I did a conference in Florida, and because I'm a jerk, and I will be a jerk more times than that, I told the students, so what's the name of this conference? No looking at your pamphlet. Uh, so what's the theme for the conference? Uh, dude, if I don't know the name, I probably don't know the theme. Well, I would like to welcome all of you to the racist conference. And they're like, what? Uh, I was like, if you don't know what you're going for, what you're in for, what you're trying to obtain, then you're not going to get anything out of it. And by the time you walk in the door, well, this sucks. Well, it does, because you don't even know what you're trying to accomplish. I'm going to give you a classic example. If you haven't defined your happiness, that's why you're still looking for it. You have to define your own happiness in order to figure it out. Now, for today's session, transitioning from parent engagement to family engagement, there's a difference. But before I preach, I'd like for you all to start talking about it a little bit, because one of the things that I promise you is that if I don't leave you with at least 15 different ideas before we leave the session, I didn't do my job. If you don't come up with a variety of ways to change from parent engagement to family engagement, I've failed you. Don't tell me, but just know that I failed you, okay? But the other thing that you need to know, we don't allow our audiences, and in particular our parents, to talk. And I'm gonna throw some stones, and if it hits, just kind of try to dodge them. But because I've been doing this for a while, I'm telling you because this is something that I see and I want you to avoid. Stop telling our parents that our session begins at 6 p.m. to make that early bird parent that shows up at 5.40 p.m. wait half an hour before you even start your session. You're only enabling the rest of the parents to say, well, we'll start whenever you get here, I guess. No, we start at the time that we say we're going to start. And if you want to make it even more challenging, what do you preach to your children, parents? Not, not on time or whenever you can make it? Or I'm just wondering. Well, no, yeah, we tell them to be on time. Okay, just making sure we're on the same page. So that being said, with your neighbors in twos or threes, not fours, I see you all already, twos or threes, twos or threes, I want you to talk about what you think the difference might be between just parent engagement versus family engagement. You take it as you will, that's all you have. Four minutes to talk, ready, set, go.
We'll give it one more minute because you all are wrapping up. One more minute. And time. Raise your hand if you can hear me, please. The techniques that work with preschool students also work with adults, hands down. There's a reason preschools, I call them little boot camps for humans, work so well. Routines and habits. You get to establish the culture of your room, of your camp, of your workshop, of what you're doing by how you set it up. So if you noticed, and I don't know if you did, this mic keeps on going in and out. Can you all hear me okay in the back? Because I'm pretty loud anyway. All right, good. So if you notice, what tends to happen, energy changes when you get to talk to someone else. Some of you were sitting very attentive and ready to learn. And then let's talk. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. you're right. Oh, I didn't think about that. You need to allow our parents to talk because how are you building a sense of community by never allowing them to talk to one another. You know as well as I know because you just did it, the majority of you. If a parent comes with another parent, who are they going to sit with? That parent. If you came with somebody else, who are you sitting with? Look to your left and your right. You know who I'm talking about. The people that you came with. It's our comfort zone, our comfort level, okay? Now, because there's too much brain power here and... I am not the only nor the leading authority on this topic. I am pretty good. I'll give myself that much. But there's too much brain power in here to go to waste. So let's talk about, I'm going to need at least six different examples, the difference between parent engagement and family engagement. Very brief and to the point. I don't need you to start off with, and when I was in kindergarten, my mom didn't go. I don't have time for that right now. Just really quick, what's the difference between family engagement and parent engagement? Let me get six examples. Raise your hand, please. One right here, nice and loud. That is what I call match from the families. You know how we have to provide match to you? You provide match to the family because now the younger child gets to witness it as well. On three, everybody clap once. One, two, three. I hadn't even clapped yet. Wait. One, two, three. Counted. Okay. Somebody else. Right in the back. Nice and loud, please. Very good. One, two, three. One, two, three. Somebody had their hand up right here. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And hence why, hold on, some of y'all were already like this. I haven't even started counting. Hold on. This was very intentional. Parent engagement to family engagement. I don't feel the pressure of a guardian. Uh, if I'm, I don't have a parent, my aunt, my uncle, my grandma, the different situation, for all intents and purposes, that's my family. I won't say it's all inclusive, but much more inclusive. Because especially when you do, you know, the, the muffins with mom and I don't have mom or the donuts with dad and I don't have dad, like, well, good for y'all. So changing the names. All right, now, one, two, three. One, two, three. Somebody else. What else, do, what else is the difference? One more person right there. Right. Absolutely. Do not be that bougie wedding that says family engagement, no kids allowed. Don't do that. You can't call it family engagement and say, 
well, part of your family engagement. No, family engagement means everybody, all right? Everybody clap on three. One, two, three. All right, so here are some points that I wanted to share with you all for parent engagement versus family engagement. Parents only versus the whole family. You would be surprised when the first grader says to the 12th grader, Jimmy, why are you talking about going to college if you're flunking math in the middle of the virtual session? Ooh, ouch, okay. But they get to talk as a group. One party hears a message versus the whole party hears a message. I dare you to run your financial aid night for your parents only and then for your students only and then have them compare notes. That in itself tells you everything. Parent interaction only versus family interaction. There's a difference. Even in the virtual world, and you can do this right now, we're doing family engagement where the student needs to be sitting with the parent and we do activities where they actually talk to one another on camera. I'm gonna tell you right now, I am from a Mexican household, okay? If I could get witnesses and other people to help my parents kind of treat me like a normal human being, I'm going to take advantage of that. Okay, Ernesto, tell your dad how you really feel. Are y'all recording? Because before I start, <laughs> when other people are viewing the parents, you know, even the parents' reaction like, okay, I'm glad to hear that. In their faces and in their breath, you can be like, I'm gonna kill you later, but we're doing this in public. But it changes the dynamics, the energy, and also the way the message is received, okay? Unintended parent time versus intended family time. You can't call it parent time when I'm coming to a parent meeting. Hey, baby, you wanna go on a date? Sure, where? To the school? I don't think so. That's unintended. But when you can make it intended family time, meaning, the families are starting to look forward to our events. We have gear up clients where we meet with them monthly for our family engagement, and the younger siblings are asking to participate, and the client, the students, I mean the parents, geez, I can get it eventually, are asking if everybody can join. Yes, it's family engagement. We want everyone involved. So in, in the last point, it helps improve your family relationships. Here's the bottom line. While it breaks my heart to say this, I'm also part of the problem. So I'm not only a member, I'm the president too, okay? We have students in households with their families, their relatives, their, their uh, guardians, their parents, and we think that they're talking because they're in the same household. And somebody in here, and I know you're in here too, because I ain't the only one, you're texting your child to come to the living room and they're in the room next door. You're texting your child to take out the trash because they're upstairs and you're downstairs. And then we're wondering why we're not communicating that much. Some of y'all even adopted Snapchat just to communicate with your child. You know who you are, okay? All right, so it helps improve family relationships too, which is an important part. Now, some of y'all were here for Choose Workshop, but unfortunately, this is where a lot of it starts. The marketing. If you're inviting me to something like this, hey, parents, we have an awesome event. It's going to be amazing, and we have food. Okay, that's what I tell my kids every day at my house. So what's different from my house to yours and where you're doing? It's all in how you get that message out. So video trumps email. For those of you that weren't here the last session, if you incorporate video into your email, it increases the odds of being clicked through 300%. 300%. Now, I am that college professor. I'm not going to give you everything in this because this is just a guide. If you're creating a PowerPoint to read every single slide and every word that's in it, then you're doing a disservice to your audience. But I am gonna ask you to take notes. Videos trump email. What if we asked our students, can you create a video? Can you make a TikTok? Can you do something funny? Can you pretend to be your dad? Can you pretend to be your mom? Can you pretend to be the principal? Oh, you're gonna get some high quality content, guaranteed. Okay, all right, Johnny, you and Mary are gonna make a video. Johnny, you're gonna be the dad. Mary, you're gonna be the student. Oh, they're gonna go to town on that. And that's the video that you send. What if the video for our financial aid night was from a student, I'll pretend to be the student. Mommy, papi, it's important for you to come to this meeting tonight because we've been stressing about how we're gonna pay for this. Today's session can help us pay the majority, a good portion of it, 
free money, government money, money that you've already been paying into a system, your taxes, can we please make sure we show up? If you send me that video invite, it's kind of hard for me not to show up. It really is. I'm not saying that they won't, but it's kind of hard. But make it so that, here's the question that you need to answer everywhere when we're talking about marketing. What are you helping me fix or why do I need to be there? Because if you're not answering that in the first 30 seconds of your video, in the first paragraph of your email, in the first sentence of your text, that's why they're not clicking through, they're not reading through. So video into your email. Texting is shared. Send a text and be creative with your wording. So tell me something really cool that you've done with your family or parent engagement. A giveaway that you gave, a prize or food. Tell me something cool, anything that comes to mind. Yes. Semester award celebration. What if you started a text? I hear they're gonna celebrate our students today and we need to be there by X time. Okay, maybe I'm gonna start asking questions. Maybe I forward the text and maybe I'm gonna call. Hey, are you really celebrating my kid? Because you know, my kid doesn't usually get celebrated. Like you might get a call, but it, it, it's in, it, it peaks interest is what I'm trying to get to. Texting is shared and when you're doing video, you're definitely going to be increasing the odds of that video to be shared especially if it's just a quick video where I can just copy paste, I can just forward. And believe it or not, and I'm telling you from experience, if you spend that extra minute teaching our parents in Spanish and or English or any other language that you can, this is how you copy and paste a video and text, I guarantee you it's going to increase. When they get that video, if I get a video of my own kids marketing an event, I'm gonna send it to my comadre, I'm gonna send it to my compadre, I'm gonna send it to my neighbor, I'm gonna send it to my aunt, my grandma, her grandma, none of which are going to the meeting, but I'm sharing. Again, it's you getting the word out, okay? Snail mail can be special. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example. Instead of saying, parents, we have a welcome back to school kickoff. We cannot wait to see you again. None of that is really appealing to me because I've heard that for the past 15 years if I have kids. Parents, you have been hand-selected from the Gear Up family to be our Gear Up ambassadors. We need you on this date at this point, and when you send the, the mailings, let's pretend this is the letter. You send snail mail. You send one letter that's printed out on red paper. If that person shows up, they automatically win a prize because they brought their invite that was different. Guess what happens by the next meeting? Everybody's walking in like, hey, here's my invitation. Good, nobody asked you for it, but okay, good. They want to know. Switch it up. You can put a sticker on it. You can put a stamp on it. You can change the wording on it. And if you really want to test how effective these and efficient these uh, emails or snail mails are, write something in the middle of the whole message. By the way, if you text this or if you call this number, or if you show up at this time, you get a free prize. You get a recognition. You get a shout out. You get this letter that your student wrote to you. You would be surprised because I'm the jerk that does that to our own coworkers. By the third paragraph, I write, text me your stupid E to confirm that you read this email. I send it out to five people and I get one reply. I know how many people read it. Trust me, they're happy to text that to me. But if you didn't read it, you didn't even know that I asked you to do that. So be creative with your wording, okay? And so that email wording matters, the same thing, and social media still works. Case in point, take out your cellular devices, and if you're on social media, now's the time. We love to promote what we eat. We love to promote something great that's happening to our family. And let's be real, social media is the life I want you to think that I'm living, okay? That's what social media is. What if we posted the efficiency of our program? What if we posted a testimonial of our parents leaving that family engagement session saying what they felt, what they thought, how it benefited them? What if we posted a student inviting everybody via your social media channels to that event? What if we used a principal? What if we used a gear up staff? What if we used the superintendent? What if we use our bilingual population? Trilingual in some cases, it's gonna vary. So here's what I want you to do right now. On your social media, this is a test for yourself. Don't be scared, but you might be scared with the results. 
I'm asking you to post, why am I amazing? Why am I amazing? On your own social media, you can use, some of you are like, oh, I don't want people answering that one, I don't know. Why am I amazing? Post it on your own social media, use the hashtag for Gear Up West on your own. This is your own personal social media. It's an experiment and you'll see why. Why am I amazing? And if you can, and if you can, hashtag Gear Up West, hashtag Cool Speak. Okay? Now, I want you to, and if you don't do any of the hashtags, I don't care because that's not the purpose of the activity. So hashtag Gear Up West, hashtag Cool Speak. If you don't do any hashtags, which is the tic tac toe board, don't do any of them. I just want you to post why am I amazing so that you can see what happens. And you're gonna have some clowns like me that are gonna reply within 10 seconds. Then you're gonna have other people that are gonna write a whole paragraph and novel, and people are gonna have to keep on scrolling through to see the rest of the comments. But I want you to see what this social media experiment does so that we can use it later, okay? Clap once if you hear me. Clap twice if you hear me. So before I share family engagement topics, let's brainstorm again. Let's come up with at least five family engagement topics that you feel would be beneficial for your population. Not necessarily universal. You have different populations. Give me five topics that you feel would be beneficial as family engagement topics for our parents and our students to be together and watch, listen to, either virtually and or in person. Five of them, raise your hand real quick, whatever comes to mind. What topics could we do our sessions about? Right here. How to pay for school. Okay, there's one, keep going. So are those the software programs that you use for, okay, how to, how to use all these tools that you have to check grades. So rewording that one, how to find out when your student does your homework or when they don't. Ooh, let me show up for that one. Okay, right here. How and who to be connected with. The resources, the networking, the, your point of contacts, people to talk to, especially if you have a Spanish speaking population. Give them somebody to go to that they can speak to in their own language. It makes a big difference, okay? Keep going, let me get at least three more, right here. College knowledge, right here. What you and your student need to know about the senior year. Tell me your name, Mindy. So let me do an exercise with you real quick. She's like, I hate you right now. What's something that most parents miss, forget, or don't take advantage of, or don't do that senior year? Okay. Okay. That, one, that one's plenty for me. Here's why. We're used to the same titles and labels for all the workshops that we're numb to it. Would you like your student to end up with a cap and gown come graduation because supplies are limited or deliveries are way behind. We need you to be here. Oh, geez, all right, well, I might want to show up for that one. I don't want to be my kid up there with his, you know, sombrero and boots on and not having his graduation cap and gown. And it's true, you're not making it up. It's the truth. It's the same thing right now. I'm gonna tell you right now because I've recently experienced this. While I'm embarrassed to say it, I'll say it. Do you really want to go to the beach in Mexico? Because it's taking months to get a passport. If you don't have it now, I'll send you pictures. Now all of a sudden, like, okay, I need to pay attention to that, okay? Give me two more topics. Two more topics for family engagement, right here. How to make money. And <clears throat> I get really creative with these titles to switch them up. Is your child really lying to you when they say they can make money off of YouTube? Is it really possible for your child to make money with video games? Parents are gonna wanna go, like, can you equip me with the words to continue to tell this kid no? <laughs> then by the time they leave, like, hey, vamos a comenzar on YouTube, let's start on YouTube, like tomorrow, let's go. Because they'll find out and they learn. So again, it's how you title it. Give me one more topic, one more topic that we can do. Anybody? Graduation requirements. So how could we reword 
that title, that topic. Graduation requirements. If I don't go to the meeting and I don't get the requirements or I don't understand them, what are the consequences? What happens? So, <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'll repeat it right now. How soon can you get your kid out of the house? Graduation requirements. They might not even see the graduation requirements. I don't know, but I'm going to that meeting. How soon can I get them out of the house? Absolutely. Say it again. It, it can, it can, but we're, obviously we're being a little facetious here, but something. Have some fun with it, and you know what? I don't want to be a celebrity diva here, because I'm not, but sometimes if you get people talking about just the title of your workshop, that's some progress. Not obviously in the completely negative, I'm going to get in trouble way, but you're creating a buzz about it, okay? Now, here are some family engagement topics that I want to share with you that we've already done, and I just wanted to share a few so that I could give you some resources as well, okay? What's after high school? In case you're wondering how to do it, here's the first activity that you're going to do in family engagement. Parents, stand face-to-face -face with your senior. Senior? Tell them what the game plan is after high school. Oh, yeah, now you know why we're angry, huh? You have to get them dialoguing about it. But here's the other part, too, that while Gear Up is the premier college readiness program, I still have to face a parent and let them know, you know what, these $240,000 in loans, it's all good. I have to let them know what options are out there for them. I have to let them know, look, your kid has been investing in the stock market since they were 10. They already have more money than I do, and I'm trying to tell them to go to college. I'm trying to tell them to learn this. Yes, but what for? How can they do it? How can they pay for it? But what's after high school? And I'm going to give you my golden nugget that I've been using for the past two, three years now. Stop asking our kids what they want to be. I mean, what they want to be when they grow up. Because you're going to get the cool answer depending on where you're at. I work with a lot of migrant students. I'm going to be an immigration attorney. Cool. How's your English? Not very good. Uh, how's your Spanish? Tampoco. Okay. Like, not, not that either. Okay. So, why? Because of my parents. I love the story. I love the energy. But you're a math wizard. And you're great at math. And you're good at teaching other people math. Let's see what you're good at. So instead of asking what do you want to be when you grow up, here's the million dollar question that I've been asking that's been producing phenomenal results for us. What do you want to change in this world when you grow up? Now I don't care what career you take because you can be an accountant, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be a teacher, and you can still focus on your plan. This is what I want to change when I grow up. I've had students say, I want to change that feeling of being evicted, being broke, and not knowing where my next meal is coming from. That's a pretty good motivator. When I tell you I'm going to be a doctor because they make a ton of money and I heard anesthesiologists bank, even though I'm flunking science right now, maybe not the best matchup, okay? But here's where we need to challenge our parents as well. Again, I'm... I'm preaching from where I come from and a lot of the populations that I work for. In Latin American countries, you're supposed to declare your major by the time you're in 10th, 11th, 12th grade. So when you have a student telling their parent, I don't know what I want to go to college for, well then don't go, what are you going for? It's different here. This is a golden opportunity to explain that. But guess who needs to do the explaining? The student. I need you to explain to your parents how the education system is different here. I don't know, then why are you trying to get an education? What are you, you going to do? How are you going to get through it? You put the, board, the burden on them, but they have to do the research to figure it out. So figure out what's after high school. When I say, um, and, and by the way, for those of you not using, um, oh, geez, College Board's Big Future for what's after high school, I highly recommend it. College Board uh, Big Future. It's a phenomenal resource, it's free, and it has resources for students and the parents. I want to make sure that I gave you a resource for each one. How is our mental health? Again, I'll use my population because I can make fun of me. Vicks Vaporub does not cure everything. 
even though we think it does. 7-Up and a Sprite is not going to cure everything that happens in here. But it's what we tend to preach at times. This conversation alone, the dialogue alone of mom, dad, what does mental health mean to you? Might open your eyes to realize, no wonder they never talk about it. They don't even understand what it is, how to approach it, what questions to ask. All they know is, well, I keep on asking my daughter, is she okay? You also keep on asking your daughter how school is. Let me guess, good? You're going to get the same answer when you keep on asking the same question. So a resource for how is your mental health that I use and I try to use in some of our summer camps too. There's an app called Mood Meter. Mood Meter is out of Yale University, created by a PhD from Yale. It has four different quadrants, and I check in with myself four times a day to ask me what my mood is. I can't continue to get angry at my child and their parents when they do not possess the vocabulary to talk about mental health, when they cannot express their emotions besides, I'm frustrated, because that's the only word they've been using. Mood meter allows you to check in on yourself, find out what mood you're in, asks you then, do you want to stay in this quadrant or would you like to move to another one? No, I'd like to move to this happier one. Then it gives me reminders of what I said about myself when I was in that quadrant to remind me what I need to do to get there, and then it might follow up with a quote or a resource. On top of it, it'll provide you with a monthly chart of your mood. Imagine if you got to visit that chart with our students and taught our parents how to do the same. That would be life-changing. How can financial literacy save me money? How many of you do financial literacy programming? Raise your hand. A few of you. Tell me what the big takeaway of that session is. No one has enough? For, for the parents, I guarantee you, that's the big takeaway. What else? What's the big takeaway of your financial literacy session? Why are you doing it? Make more money, say it again. Absolutely, for students it's a reality check. You may have done this post yourself, and if not, I guarantee you, you've read it. Man, now that I'm grown, I, didn't, I don't know how my parents did it. How, how were we always happy and had food and clothes, and they got paid like $7 an hour? How, how is that possible? But now it's completely different, and here's why. You have this crazy thing called the internet. You have this other crazy thing called Google, YouTube University, free college courses online. You can educate yourself. Most banking institutions have programs for you for free, but you have to ask. We used to work for a program um, with US Bank that provided scholarships if you improved your financial literacy as a team. I guarantee you Bank of America has it, Fifth Third Bank, whichever banks you, or credit unions, they have something. But here's the question that we really need to ask. Why do you want money? What's it for? How much is enough? Because the reality of it is, and you can look at statistics in this country, it's not because we don't make enough money, it's because we always spend more than what we make. How did my mom and dad working in a factory with the bank of underneath the mattress or the bank of the chonis or underwear drawer, have enough money to never own a credit card, pay off all their cars, only have a mortgage, and have money in the bank. Because they only spent on the essentials. You and I both know people with master's degrees, PhDs, that, oh, we already know how much in student loans and don't make enough money. So the financial literacy piece is important. Financial aid, and I think we mentioned it, how to pay for your education. I hate to do this sometimes, but we need to sit down and let our parents and our students see, okay, so I just want to make sure these numbers are right. You're saying this is going to cost us $240,000? Possibly. But they're saying that their scholarships bring all of them now because they, they want to figure out how to do it, okay? Uh, why does knowing my family history matter? Three of you, take a shot at it. Why does knowing my family history matter? Anybody? Okay, if you're first gen, what does that mean? Keep going. Two more. Scholarships, why else? 
emotional intelligence. One, my identity. Two, research has proven and shown over and over again, if a student knows their family history, they tend to do better in school and graduate on time because I know what my parents went through to get me here. I know the sacrifices that were made to get me here. I didn't know my family history, more than you need to know, until after I got kicked out of college. After my mom told me what she did to get here, where she worked and how she was treated, I owned college and took 18 credit hours one semester. But that motivation is your family history. One of the best assignments that you can do with your family engagement, create a quiz. Allow them to come up with questions. For students, for example, what were you like in high school? Why didn't you go to high school? What did you want to be when you were my age? How were you when you were my age? Did you get in trouble when you were my age? How did you meet mom? Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to answer that one, but you know, they'll come up with stuff. And the same goes vice versa when the parents get to create questions for their students, okay? The last one, technology isn't the only reason we talk. We don't talk, sorry. Somebody in here probably knows this. What's the average screen time for a teen right now? <laughs> you all sounded like parents. Oh, oh my God, it is brutal. What is it, roughly? Nine hours is the average for teens pre-COVID. My guesstimate right now is around 11 and a half hours of screen time. The next time any teen tells you they don't have time, the only question I'm gonna ask you to ask them is the same one I'm gonna ask you. While some of you open your mouths nice and wide, go to your settings in your phone right now. Look at, <laughs> she was like, no, no, I'm good. Go to your settings in your phone because you'll be surprised. You really will. Check out your screen time right now. What is your average screen time right now? Pretty good. That's pretty good to be honest with you. So raise your hand if you can hear me, please. Hands down. Now, don't be like parents tend to be. The question is from the team, but why? Because I said so. That gets old after a while and it really doesn't work. So why are you so upset about my screen time? Screen time, what's yours? Don't worry about mine, I pay the bill. Okay, teach them how to dialogue about this. What do I mean by that? Mom, dad? The reason I'm stuck in this thing is because I'm lonely. Nobody talks to me, and I actually have a bunch of fake friends on here that make me feel like I have friends. All of a sudden, the dialogue isn't just about the screen time. It's a concern about your mental health, screen time, all these other things. But also to find out what they're doing, what they're getting into. There's a reason we have these Finstas. There's a reason that they have all these hidden apps. There's a reason they don't want you to grab their phone. There's a reason that they don't want to share their passcode, but there's also a reason they should. And I am going to play the old Mexican dad card. Who pays for the cell phone bill? When you're ready to pay for your own, you can use your own password. Here, Poppy. I kid you not, here, Poppy. It was like 18 different touches onto the screen. I'm like, yeah, I was never going to crack that. Like, no way. But you can have a whole session on the technologies that are out there to help them monitor their cell phones. Life360 to find out where they're at. Life360 app, if you've not heard of it or used it, and if you have a team that's driving, OMG. The app will tell me how fast my child is driving and if they hit their brakes and or use their cell phone while driving. That in itself is gold. Oh, no, no, it'll tell on everybody, not just one. <laughs> Somebody else was broken, was busted. It'll tell on everybody for sure, okay? So these are just some of the family engagement topics. Now here's what I want you to do. This conference, this knowledge, this participation means zero if you do nothing with it. You know as well as I know, and we've all been to that conference that gave us this awesome handout, this awesome manual, and it, it, it's sitting right there on your desk just the way it got there from the day after conference. I'm gonna ask you to spend the next three minutes I'm coming up with at least one or two topics that you want to try to implement as family engagement at your schools. Talk to your neighbor, talk it out, three minutes. Get at least one, if not two different topics that you want to implement and come up with a title for it. 
see how, can, how creative we can get. Ready, set, go. Look at the magic we created without even saying a word. Just rolled my hand, put my hand up and somebody else put it up. Now, here's a tip that I'd like to share with you all because I told you if you don't leave with at least 15 different tools, resources, and I didn't do my job. This goes for you all as well. Set an appointment for yourself to follow up on what you just said. Put it on your calendar. Because we tend to forget, life happens, we're too busy, I meant to, I was going to, I could have, should have, would have, but it doesn't happen. Go ahead and set, us out, set an appointment in your cell phone right now for X date, X time, at least as a reminder, follow up on this. This workshop, this title, this invitation, this email, this video, whatever it is you are going to do, because to me, what I've come to learn after doing conferences for over 25 years now, this is great, somewhat beneficial. What happens after you leave those doors is what is the best and very beneficial but it needs some sort of implementation to it. Now, I wanna go back to these because I forgot to give you some resources for uh, how's our mental health. Um, there's a site called kidshealth.org, kidshealth.org, that O-R-G. And it actually will give you a breakdown for anything that you're going through, a feeling, an emotion, click on it and it'll give you some resources. For financial literacy, here are two that I use, and I didn't want to say them because I use them, but because uh, I don't want to sound like I'm promoting my own stuff because I'm that smart. Mint.com, I think, is one of the best financial resources on planet Earth. And it's free, and if you want to be like me, go crazy and use the paid version, which is like $4.99 a month. Mint.com. Both of my children, who are teens, and I have a baby too, it's a whole other story, uh, if you ask, I had to, before they could get a bank card, I told them they needed to work on a budget and put it up on mint.com and follow through on it. Here's why. Does anybody in here use mint? If you set up a budget and you spend over that budget, what does mint very nicely do to you? I'm gonna rephrase it. Hey stupid, you said you were gonna spend 200 entertainment, you're at 350, what's up? That's basically how I feel every time I get the email. It's not worded that way, but it helps you out. Mint.com allows you to set goals, and the other one that I use that I've set my children on too, 
is Digit, D-I-G-I-T. That is for savings. Now, again, <laughs> I do family and parent engagement as one of my specialties. Does that mean that my children are angels and they're perfect? Absolutely not. Not at all. I set them up with Digit. We're going on about 14, 15 months for them. With part-time jobs, both my kids have a savings in Digit that they're not allowed to touch, per dad, of over $600. It doesn't seem like a ton, but ask your average teen to save that over a year, probably not going to happen. Digit allows you to help make that happen. Now, for the technology and, and mental health, one of the things, there's a, a research study that I was just reading and I didn't finish reading it, Two-thirds of parents are saying that parenting is a million times more difficult now than it was 20 years ago. That's pre-COVID, that's pre-social media, for the most part, for most of us, pre-internet, so to speak. It changed everything, so keep that in mind. I had a mom tell me in a session in Georgia once, I was like, so your student can be filling out that application, listening to music, and watching the game on TV. And this lady was like, no, he cannot. Okay, why? Because I can't. Okay, that's a different, and she was straight up, but it's true. She couldn't, so she couldn't, the, the matches wouldn't work. How can that child do that? Is it the best way, most efficient? Not necessarily. Does it still work? It does, okay? All right, let me get through the rest of this to make sure we cover everything. Sorry, that slide doesn't look that good. How can improve improve communication? So here's what I want you to do. Everybody stand up and get a partner and get face to face and you can get six feet apart if you need to. You can put your masks on if you talk real loud like I do, which means you're spitting all the time, sorry. All right, with your partner, pick who's A and who's B. I love how in most partnerships, somebody assigned you whatever letter you ended up with. So, because the A's thought they were smooth, B, you get to go first, okay? B, for one, well, I'll make it shorter. For 35 seconds, you are going to talk about one of the things that you wrote on your post-its. One of the characteristic skills or traits that you learn from your parents. I'm gonna make it for like 40 seconds, all right? B, you go first, face to face with your partner. Now we're going to practice these weird things that we teach our students. Good eye contact, good body posture, stop dancing throughout the whole thing that you're saying, okay? 35, 40 seconds. B, you go first. Talk about one of the characteristic skills or traits that you learn from your parents. Ready, set, go. Sam, 11.45, right? That's our end time. And time. Raise your hand if you can hear me, please. Sorry, I cut you off. I know, but I got to get through all this. Okay, so B win. A, you get to return the favor. Now you get to talk about one of the characteristic skills or traits that you learned from your parents, guardian, whomever it might be. On three. One, two, three, go.
Thank you very much. You can do a fist pound with your neighbor if you feel comfortable doing so. Have a seat, everybody. Have a seat. Now you can give one another, well, it's not that cool of a handshake, but you can, everybody give yourselves a round of applause for sharing. Thank you. Round of applause for sharing. I have a quick question for you. What was the difference between you sharing that out loud to the whole group versus you sharing it face to face with someone else? You all tell me, there is no right answer. Right here, go ahead. Less intimidating, because I don't have to speak in front of everyone. And trust me when I tell you, our parents feel the same way most of the time. Unless you get me at the parent meeting, then well, you can't shut me up, but it's intimidating. It's challenging, and why is that? because we haven't created that safe, comfortable environment for me to feel like I can just share out loud whenever I want. For me to feel like, you know what? I don't need to be set up classroom or an auditorium. Why don't we set up a U-shape the next time so that we can see one another? Stop having our parents' sessions or family sessions in the auditorium to see 13 parents. Why don't we have it in a classroom in a U-shape, in a circle? It changes the dynamics completely, okay? What else was different between sharing face-to-face -face versus out loud? Yes. More personal. More personal, and you know what? You didn't feel like, well, can they hear me in the back? Is it okay? Am I loud enough? Or am I standing right? Or whatever. So it's more comfortable that way and more personal. One more person. Yes, in the back. Oh, we got a few. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right here. Somebody put right here. Yeah. Right, right, right. Changes the energy a little bit, right? Yes. Uh, connection, the connection was different. I saw you two staring yourselves in the eyes a lot. I don't know if that was weird or like, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Somebody in the back, right? Yes. It's relationship based, absolutely. What are we trying to, transition from parent engagement to family engagement. What is one of our biggest challenges? They're not talking to one another. We get to create that often, that dialogue. So that was face-to-face -face and it was an example. Here's the example again. Okay, parent, student, face-to-face, -face, express to one another why you love one another. Almost nine times out of 10, the mom and the dad or the daughter or the son one of them, that's all I did was express how much you love one another. <sighs> I can't look at you. I can't look at you. Like, they wouldn't even look. And it's because they typically don't do it. And it's because typically they don't have the vocabulary to do it. And it's because in some of our cultures we're taught you can't cry because if you cry, you know what that means, right? Tears come out of your eyes. Like, I don't know, but... So face-to-face -face dialogue changes everything. When I say our homework assignments, let me go through this real quick. We give out assignments before the sessions. If I'm gonna talk about financial literacy, I'm sending you the Mint uh, app, I'm sending you the uh, Digit app, I'm sending you whatever partnership with a financial institution we have a partnership with and the match that we're getting from them. I'm sending you their information. I'm sending you a quiz. There's always a quiz involved. For our homework assignment, um, when we talked about our family history, I forgot to give it to you the last time, we gave away five Ancestry.com memberships. It's one thing to say, I want to learn my family history. Oh no, now you're really going to learn your family history. Make them giveaways, prizes, so that you can really get into the homework. The homework assignments are sent before and or after. If we did a college tour as a family, okay, how can we improve so that that next college tour that we do as a family, what questions can we ask? Where do we go? Who do we ask? Are demographics important, graduation rates, job placement, financial aid, or is it what our students think is important? The sports team, the dorms, and the gym, because that's what they tend to look at. 
There's a reason colleges and universities are investing millions in dorms and gyms. It's not because everybody's getting fit, but it's so that when they come on a recruitment, look at our gym. Oh, I'm definitely going to get fit here. Okay. Communication tools and resources. Stand up with your partner again, please. I know, I know. If you can, grab a writing utensil. Just one of you, just one of you. Just one of you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the next exercise that I'm about to teach you could make or break your relationship and you're gonna find out what kind of patients you're really made out of. This is a technique that they teach in premarital counseling. Doesn't mean it worked for me, but it's something that they teach in premarital counseling, okay? Here's what's going to happen. The person with the object, we'll pretend this is the pen, is the only person allowed to speak. When that person is done speaking and they give the other person the object, the first thing that they need to do is recap and check for comprehension. Not, well, well, you're wrong because, oh, let me tell you how to fix it, because that's what parents tend to do. So here's what we're going to talk about, just to make it fun. And no, I'm not, this is just for the conversation. Don't judge me, people. This dialogue is going to be why we should not get vaccinated. It, see what happened? Automatically. See what happened? Automatically. Hence, that's how our students feel and our parents feel. Tell your dad why you're always upset. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, you're right. So why we should not get vaccinated. Role play a little bit if you need to. I understand if you're on the other side. This is good for you to learn because we're going to ask our parents and our students to do the same. And then what you can do is, I remember when that bald dude came and taught us, I didn't want to talk about not being vaccinated, but he made me. You have an experience to talk about. So the person with the object can talk about why it's okay or why you prefer not to get vaccinated. You're gonna do it for like 40 seconds. And once you give, I'll tell you when time's up. I'll tell you when time's up. Then you give the object to the next person and they have to recap what they heard. Question. No, you're talking about why you think it's good to not get vaccinated. That's what you are talking about. Okay, make it up. Stop pretending y'all can't be drama queens, all right? Y'all can get into this, all right? Pretend. On three, you get started. One, two, three, let's go. All right, time, hand over the speaking pen to the other person. Recap, recap, go. <laughs> okay, before any violence occurs in here, give the speaking object back, please. Now, you get to say if the recap was accurate or inaccurate and fix any deficiencies. Go. <laughs> All right, give your partner a high five and have a seat. Give your partner a high five and have a seat. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of us tend to do. All right, clap once if you hear me. Raise your hand if you can hear me. Now, thank you for clapping. Now, um, give me four topics that this specific activity would be great for. Four conversations, four dialogues, four topics amongst parents and their children, their students. Say that again. Screen time, absolutely. <laughs> you get, here's what you learn. 
this wasn't that difficult for you. And I tried to kill two birds with one stone. Switching roles and perspectives. It wasn't that difficult. But what we tend to learn, and especially as a parent, I block out half sentence through because I'm already figuring out how to fix it and what to tell you and where to go and what to do. I didn't even hear the rest. And when I recap, all I can say is, I don't know, but he broke up with you. Like, that's all I got. Like, that's all I heard. So it's being able to improve your listening skills. We love to improve our communication skills and never talk about our listening skills. And trust me when I tell you, that topic can be challenging. So screen time, give me three more topics that we can talk about. Grades and or why you do or don't tell me how you're doing in school. So I have to use uh, from my own experience, my son, his senior year, he was like, Papi, I don't want to tell you I'm getting a C in this class because I already know I'm going to bring it up to at least a B. I'm going to be all right. And when I tell you, I know you're going to get upset and you're going to tell me I can do better. He sounded just like me. I'm like, dang you. I don't always say it that way. Yeah, you do. You're right. But because it's a broken record sometimes, that's why we stop. So talking about grades right here. Mental health, when the student communicates with somebody, especially their parents, I need some help. What for? I never got help, hence the problem we're in right now. <laughs> Just throwing it out there. Maybe that's why we are the way we are right now, mom, dad. You don't want to say that, but it's part of the problem, okay? Keep going. Give me another one right here. Money. So the conversation amongst families, and I don't know if this happened for you, the conversation about money was similar to the one for sex in my household. Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. I kind of figured that one out. Yep. You have to save. Okay, what else? I don't know. That's all my financial literacy. That's all I got for you. We don't know. We don't know that there's emotional spending. We don't understand that I can't get a new cell phone because I'm trying to just pay for rent or the mortgage. We don't know that I have to work 80 hours to buy you those Jordans that you really want and I have to put something else on the back burner. We don't understand those things, and sometimes it's embarrassing to share, and that's why we don't share. But even saying that in itself is going to change how we are. One more topic for this activity. One more topic in the back, and then right here. Plans for after high school. The student gets the talking stick first. All right, Mom, Dad, since you can't talk, let me tell you why I'm going to be a YouTuber. Like, they're already blocking stuff out immediately, immediately. But guess what? When you get this, you have to tell me what you heard. All I heard was YouTube. Hence the reason we never talk about this, why we're having problems, why I feel like you're shooting my dreams. Um, right here, somebody else had their hand up. Right here, yes. Career paths, career paths. Just talking about career paths. You know, when you have to tell a parent, Mom, I know you've always wanted to be an accountant. I know I'm pretty good at math. And I know your dream has always been for me to be an accountant. But I want to be a teacher. Oh, you shot me in the heart. Yes. Can you do this? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. So you can tell there's a ton of topics, all right? Now, the last one for how I can improve communication, teach them how to celebrate one another. Get them face-to-face -face or in a circle as their family. Each one of you say three things that you love about that other person. Case in point, for some of us in here, you wrote down three things that you learned, characteristics, skills, or traits from your parents, and some of you have never even told your parents these things. You didn't tell them that you became this, or you have this characteristic, or you have this skill. Even though you admire them for it, you respect them for it, you appreciate them for it, we never told them. In some cases, we can't. I don't have my dad around anymore. But you know what? You can. If you want a counseling therapy session, grab a piece of paper, write it out, and pretend you're writing him or her a letter. You want to know what counseling and therapy is? Because I've been regularly. Let me save you 150 bucks. Hi, how you doing? How's it make you feel? Time's up. 
But the beauty in letting it out is unbelievable. The comfort, the relaxation, you need to know that, and we need to explain that to our parents, okay? All right, give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. Now, some more family engagement activities just to wrap up, okay? Memory generators. Challenge our families to generate memories in the next four weeks, however it may be. Cooking together, going out to a game, playing outside, spending time playing a board game, talking one-on-one. -on -one. All of those things, memory generators. Again, Chu mentioned this earlier, but we'll reiterate it. Every strong uh, memory that you have is attached to an emotion. Case in point, not everybody needs to answer. Where were you on 9-11? You can tell me where you were, who was around you, what you were wearing, what station, where you were going, literally where you were at. If you weren't celebrating an anniversary, a death, or, or a birthday, what would you do on 9-11 of last year? Can't even think about it. Much more recent. I want our families to create those memories. I learned this the hard way. I was angry at my parents because we couldn't have summer trips. I was upset because I couldn't do what the other kids got to do all the time. Instead, I had to go pick apples with them. I had to go pick strawberries with them. I had to get up earlier during the week to do chores at the house. If I had my dad around, I would tell him to his face. It's because of that that you made me the worker that I am now. I hated you those few years, don't get me wrong, but it's because of that. But it's understanding that and seeing that because in retrospect, now we can say of our families and our parents, man, you taught me X, Y, and Z, okay? Family meals, let me tell you why it's the most important time to, to communicate. I'm chopping up the onions, I'm your son. Ask me anything you want about school because I'm focused on not losing a finger right now and I'm going to answer. And I'm not going to be thinking about, well, where are you going with this? Why are you asking me that? What are you trying to get out of me? Where we, what are we doing? And it's bonding time. Letter writing, if I had the time, which we didn't, and I apologize for you, to you. Make our parents and our students pen pals. For our family engagement, have our parents write a letter to their students saying why I wish you would have attended today's session with me and what I wanted to tell you in person. Put it somewhere where the student finds it on their own, on their own time, and they read it. When the next invite comes, you might get the whole family together. Vice versa. Allow the student to attend, write the letter, and write that letter to the parent. Put it somewhere where they find it later, and then they find out, wow, you really wanted me to attend, huh? Maybe they'll go. You can do whatever you want with the letter writing. Daily one-on-ones, literally talking to one another. I'm going to combine the letter writing and the one-on-ones. I did a session in Pennsylvania once, and I said, I want you to write a letter to every one of your children telling them how much you love them. One dad, sir, I got six kids. Can I just write one letter? If you can look me in the eyes and tell me that you love them all the same. I do. They're my children. I'm like, they're not here. I'll write six letters. Like, okay. They need to hear it, and people digest things differently. And intentional outings. It goes out with the memory generating. It doesn't require money all the time. My dad would go watch me play baseball once every other year, maybe. I remember that time because he was there. It meant the world to me because he couldn't be there because he was always working. It costs zero dollars. But sometimes we don't know what's important to our child. They need to find out and vice versa. Mom, you mean you'll be happier if I just pick up my underwear and my socks every day? Yes! But because they don't communicate it, they don't know. Okay, so let me give you this, and you can take a picture of this, and I'll wrap up with this. Where to start? What do our families need? Because if we don't know what they need, then we're creating programming that they might not even need. When can they meet? And that may require you doing a daytime program and an evening program. And I'm going to tell you, as a vendor, you all need to start demanding more from all vendors. Can you do it virtually and in person? Can we get a recording? Can you do a video to promote it? Yes, yes, yes. And as soon as they start saying yes and there's a fee, yes and there's a fee, you pick. But they could say yes and there's a match, yes and there's a match, and yes, here's an additional match. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's where you wanna go. How are we making our meetings worth coming to? If your parents and your families aren't leaving saying something positive about it, why do they wanna come back? Who are our parent champions? What do I mean by that? 
you have, regardless of social media, parent influencers. And you know you do. There's the one lady that's been talking bad about me for the past three years. There's a reason people ain't coming to the meetings. I need her on my team because she'll bring more people to our meetings. And have we asked our audience what their needs are? Get them together and make your first session a think tank. You know what? We're trying to redo our family engagement, move from parent engagement to family engagement. Parents, we need your input. Students, we need your input. What can we do? How can we do it? If I have buy-in and give you ideas and strategies and you start using them, I kind of have to be there to see them through. I'm the one that came up with the idea. So the buy-in is higher, okay? Now, um, all I want to say to close out and to make sure I end on time is this. It's easy to judge a book by its cover and say this parent never shows up, but we don't know why. Do not let this opportunity for virtual go down the toilet because we've had family engagement with moms cooking, with dads at work, with the student on Zoom somewhere else, but they're on Zoom and their parents are on. So they're still engaging together. Don't let that go down the drain, and especially in areas that are such wide, spread, as spread out as we are right now. Virtual can help you. And do what some of our clients are doing. We're doing packages of eight virtual, but two, I mean eight sessions, two of them are in person. After you do the first three virtual, like, let's go check out these guys. It's not too bad. It looks pretty good. So I hope that you took something away. I hope that it was beneficial. And more importantly, I hope that it lit a little spark in you to go give our families, not just our parents, not just our students, but our families everything that they deserve and then some. My name's Ernesto Mejia. Thank you very much for your time. Now, just to end, there's also another opportunity that I want to share with you all. It involves Match. See how I just reeled you in? It involves Match. Um, we have a partnership with McDonald's to promote their Ased scholarship. It's half a million dollars worth of scholarships. This one is specific to Hispanic students, but we're also giving out scholarship opportunities for our African American population or Asian Pacific Islanders and a, a bunch of other resources. If you attend and let us know, we will provide you with the match for attending. There are sessions for students, sessions for educators, and ses one session left for parents, and that one's going to be in Spanish. It's the last one. Educators, which is you. I might check it out because I know for a fact they're giving out three $500 gift cards to random people for attending. 50 minutes is the max of all sessions. For our students, we're gonna be giving out laptops, at least 50, $25 McDonald's gift cards, AirPods, and of course, the opportunity for students to win a scholarship, two of which will win a $100,000 scholarship, okay? You can just scan this QR code. We'll be here at the exhibit table to talk more about it. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.